Okay, so if you guys got a chance to flip on the TV this past weekend, or maybe you even got lucky enough to get down here to Orlando, Florida for the PNC Father-Son Championship, then you would have seen Tiger Woods return back to the game of golf, which is really exciting for a lot of us at home. So really, really great to see Tiger back out there. Hey guys, I'm Rotary Swing Tour Master Certified Instructor Chris Tyler, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how Tiger and how Charlie use their lower body really, really effectively in their downswing to create a lot of power and a lot of speed. And you're actually going to hear something today that you don't typically hear from us at Rotary Swing Tour, where I'm going to teach you how to actually push to get your downswing started. Let's go ahead and get started now. I know we live in the world of the internet and we have to be very cautious about what we say because people can take things out of context and spin them around and then make this a very uncomfortable environment for a lot of us. So under no circumstance is the stuff that I'm going to deliver today in any way, shape or form to take away from what Tiger Woods or Charlie do in their golf swing. In fact, I love both of their golf swings. I think that there's something that I'll point out a little bit further into today's review that Charlie may eventually end up changing but probably long after he hits his next big growth spurt. So what you're gonna see from both players is something that's extremely vital to the starting point of your downswing, and that's loading into the right hip and the right leg. And how they do this is they start to pressure shift into their right side. A good way to think about a pressure shift is just basically thinking about your right hip, kind of tracing diagonally about a half inch to an inch towards your right ankle. And if you look really closely at Tiger, you're gonna see him do just that. You're gonna see that his right hip kind of moves a little bit towards his right ankle. And you're gonna see that from this phase up to the top of the backswing, you're not gonna see a whole lot of rotation from the hips at all. In fact, you're gonna see the hips uh, really shut down the rotation, okay? And same thing with Charlie over on the right-hand side of the screen. As he starts moving from a takeaway up to the top of his backswing, look how very little rotation there is from the hips. Look how stable they are. Now. This is a key piece because a lot of times people forget that we have to get our hips from this 45 degree closed position all the way over to 45 degrees open before our hands and arms get down in front of us. So if you've ever noticed that your hips become more rotational going back and you're not creating as much separation between your hip line and your shoulder line, a good way to combat that is to focus on maintaining some knee flex. Now, if you're very restricted in your hips and you don't have a lot of mobility, then it's okay if you lose a little bit of flex. But remember, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create load. You're trying to give yourself something to move off of. And if you get more stretch and you find a way to be able to get a little bit more flex in this right leg, you're gonna start feeling some of your glutes. You'll feel the medial side of your glutes start to contract. You'll feel a little bit of your midsection. And those are all very good muscles for you to be able to use to generate power and speed. Now, when you get to the top of your backswing, as you're finishing this move off, it is perfectly fine to use your right leg to help push to get things moving. Now, I know a lot of you at home are probably sitting there saying, well, Chris, we've always been taught to pull, pull, pull from you guys, right? Yes, that's very true. But if you think about what a push movement is, right, it can create some catastrophic faults. What are those catastrophic faults that we talk about? Well, it can create early extension, which we all know is, is one of the killer moves in the golf swing where the hips come forward, the spine moves vertically, and then all of a sudden you get into a position where your hands have to try to save things at the bottom. But it can also cause you to spin out. It can cause your hips to get pushed past neutral. So if you think about this very objectively and you say, okay, if I'm allowed to push my right leg, but I counterbalance it from what my lead hip and my lead leg are doing in the downswing, then you can get into a very, very solid transition into impact position without really having to think about it. So if you watch Tiger very closely on the left-hand side of the screen, one of the key moves that he and Charlie do very well is you're going to see that in transition, there's a little increase in knee flex. Now that increase of knee flex did not have the hips and the tush coming forward. Look at it very closely. You can see the butt staying back. Okay. Now, how's he doing that? Well, if you look at his right leg, he's helping push in the direction of the target. But if you look at that lead hip and that lead leg, you can see that it's externally rotating. That movement right there is a counterbalance movement to help maintain his relationship with his spine and his hips. So he's not moving in a vertical sense. So you have to think about the lead hip and the lead leg kind of moving down and back, right? If you push as hard as you want from the right side and you think about that lead hip kind of moving down and back into a square position, then now you set yourself into a position where you can begin your post-up move. And Tiger is one of the best in the business with his post-up. 
if you watch from here down into the hitting area, you're going to see his left hip moves back up and away before he gets to delivery, right? So the left hip opens up right in the ballpark of about 45 degrees. You can see his right foot is pretty close to the floor here. And this is where he's going to work to really stall his hips out as much as he possibly can so that he can allow his hands and his arms to go ahead and release independently from the body so that he can put max speed where it matters the most. So he's using his right leg to get things started. He's helping push from that right side, but he's counterbalancing it with what he does from his lead hip and his lead leg. And so if you watch Charlie, what you're going to see is something quite different. You're going to see that he does transition beautifully. So you see the little increase in knee flex, his hips stay back. But if you look at his right foot down at the point of contact, you can see that it's quite a bit more off the ground. If you look at his hips, his hips are almost open 90 degrees, right? Somewhere in the ballpark of 75 to 80 degrees. You can see what it's done to his shoulder line here. It's opened him up a little bit. You can see that he creates a ton of side bend here as well. Now, Charlie can get away with this now. Why? Well, because he doesn't have to battle hip pain, knee pain, back pain, right? He's got a lot of mobility. He's got a lot of pliability here. And so you'll probably see that when, Ty when Charlie starts moving his way up through the ranks, when he starts getting into a position where he's a lot bigger and a lot stronger, that he will probably substitute this move out. Because we know that your, your spine hates two things. It hates sheer force and it hates compression. And so when you're turning open as much as he is here, this can potentially hurt the back over the long haul. But because he's, he's not full grown yet, he's gonna use different ways to be able to produce his power and speed. So he's using a lot of rotational force and then he's slamming on the brakes and he's letting it release out in front of him. So he creates a ton of parametric acceleration at a very young age. Now that is something that is very hard to teach kids. Kids are so plastic. They're so good about figuring out ways to be able to get their hands and arms to move faster, which in turn helps get the club head to move faster, right? So what I'm telling you is, is it's okay to push, but do it within reason. If you think about what your lead leg is doing in transition and your lead hip, and you think about counterbalancing it, you can push as hard as you want from your right leg, as long as you get into a good stable position at impact. Now, what's a good stable position at impact look like? Well, 45 degrees open with your hips, and your lead leg into a passively straight position. And we talk about that on the post-up video that's on the website. In fact, what I'm gonna do for you guys today is I'm gonna post a link in the description below to go watch that post-up video. It's a very, very good video on how to understand how to use that lead hip and lead leg. Okay, so now I'm gonna close with this. I am very excited that Tiger's back in the game of golf. And I know that he talked a lot about in his press conferences that he looks gassed, but his golf swing looks very good right now. He's doing the right things. He's in a position right now where he shouldn't sustain any sort of golf related injury. So I'm really hoping that he gets his endurance back and we see him get out there and start dominating the game of golf again at some point. And if not, then he's got somebody that's going to be following in his, his footsteps <laughs> quite, uh, quite soon. So hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Let's get out there and play some great golf.